The Call of Duty franchise has introduced countless iconic characters, from the grizzled Captain Price, to the enigmatic Ghost, to the Savage Soap, to the Betrayer Commander Graves. So many different characters, so many that we love, so many that we talk about on a consistent basis. Frank Woods, Alex Mason, Hudson, Gas, we could go on and on about all of the ones that are remembered and all of the ones we talk about regularly. Now, while most of these legends are remembered greatly, the series also has several characters whose importance and contributions have been overlooked or forgotten or even become underrated over time. These characters played pivotal roles in their respective storylines, offering emotional depth, narrative progression, and yet they remain in the shadows of the franchise's bigger names. So today we look to explore some of these forgotten characters, providing a brief overview of each and highlighting their significance in the broader Call of Duty universe. At number one, we have Sergeant Paul Jackson, who appeared in Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. Now, Sergeant Paul Jackson played a crucial role in the game's US Marine Corps mission. Jackson is a part of the team sent to the Middle East to track down a notorious terrorist leader, Khaled al-Assad. Now, Jackson's story is significant because it shows the raw intensity and chaos of war, particularly through the infamous nuclear explosion mission. In one of the most shocking moments in the franchise, Jackson is caught in the blast radius of a nuclear bomb detonated by al-Assad's forces. <laughs> While Jackson's death is inevitable in the storyline, the emotional weight of his sacrifice and the realism of his situation deeply affects the player. His role symbolizes the often unacknowledged cost of war, and his death serves as a powerful turning point in the modern warfare narrative. Despite this, Jackson remains one of the more forgotten characters in the franchise, overshadowed by the larger-than-life characters like Captain Price and Soap McTavish. And at number two, we have Derek Frost Westbrook, who appeared in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Derek Frost Westbrook served as the playable character during several of the early missions in Modern Warfare 3. He was a part of Delta Force and assisted Captain Price and Task Force 1 for 1 in their mission to stop Vladimir Makarov, the series' primary antagonist. Frost plays a significant role in key battles, including the defense of Manhattan from a Russian invasion and the daring assault on a German stronghold. His role is essential in pushing the fight back against the Russians during some of the game's most intense moments. However, his sudden disappearance halfway through the game makes his contribution easy to forget. Frost's absence in the later parts of the game left a lot of fans puzzled, really worried, as he never received the same recognition as other protagonists like Soap and Price, despite his critical role in the early stages of the conflict. Now at number three, we have one of my personal favorites, David Hesh Walker from Call of Duty Ghosts. David Hesh Walker is one of the central characters in the Ghost game, the son of Elias Walker and the brother of Logan Walker, the game's protagonist. Together, Hesh and Logan fight against the Federation, a powerful enemy force that threatened the entire United States. Hesh serves as the emotional anchor of the story. His brotherly bond with Logan drove much of the game's tension and narrative. Hesh is not only a skilled soldier, but also a devoted brother who will stop at nothing to protect his family and his country. His rivalry with the game's antagonist, Gabriel Rourke, added emotional weight to the storyline, especially as Hesh watched his father die at Rourke's hands. We can't take any chances, Logan. Even if we fail, Rourke dies. Okay, three, two, one. Despite being a crucial character in the narrative, Hesh tends to be forgotten by many fans, likely because Call of Duty Ghost didn't receive a direct sequel, and the storyline I guess would remain unresolved. But this leaves Hesh as an unfinished, yet significant figure in Call of Duty history, and if you're interested in potentially seeing what a Call of Duty Ghost 2 would have looked like, you can watch this video here, where I made my own story that is a direct sequel to Call of Duty Ghost, titled Call of Duty Ghost 2. Now for number 4, we have Private Miller, who appeared in Call of Duty World at War, and this one in particular I think is pretty damn significant. Private Miller is the protagonist during the Pacific campaign of Call of Duty World at War. He is a US Marine fighting in some of the most brutal battles of World War II, including missions set in Peilu and Okinawa. Miller's experience in the Pacific theater provides a visceral look at the brutality and the horrors of war. His story, marked by intense combat and the harrowing reality of the Pacific Front, is key to showing how warfare differed between the European and the Pacific theaters. The bond he forms with his squadmates, particularly Sergeant Roebuck, adds emotional depth to the narrative. Miller's role in leading the final assault on the Shuri Castle is a testament to the grit and perseverance of soldiers in World War II. 
but his character is often forgotten due to the broader focus on the European theater or the more popular characters like Victor Reznov, who appeared in the same game. And finally, at number 5, we have Sergeant Jonathan John Taylor, who appeared in Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Sergeant Jonathan John Taylor is the leader of the player's team in Call of Duty Black Ops 3. He is a former soldier turned villain. Taylor's storyline explores themes of control, identity, and betrayal in a dystopian future world. This is also one of my more favorite performances as I am a huge fan of the actor behind the man, who is Christopher Maloney and appears in one of my favorite shows, Law & Order SVU. Now, the importance of Taylor's character in Black Ops 3 was the descent from a respected leader to a dangerous antagonist. This adds complexity to the game's narrative, his relationship with the player character, and his personal struggle with the ethics of technology enhancements are central to Black Ops 3's plot. Taylor's importance lies in his role as both mentor and adversary, as he represents the dangers of losing one's humanity in the face of war and technology. Unfortunately, the often confusing plot of Black Ops 3 leaves many of the players forgetting Taylor's significance, as the game's narrative can be difficult to follow. Nonetheless, his journey from hero to villain is one of the more emotionally charged arcs in the franchise, yet it really goes unknown because of the reception of Black Ops 3, and John Taylor, like a lot of these characters that we talk about today, have just been forgotten. The Call of Duty franchise is known for its iconic characters, but it's important to remember that many other figures have made valuable contributions to the series' storylines. Sergeant Paul Jackson, Derek Frost Westbrook, David Hedge Walker, Private Miller, and Sergeant Jonathan John Taylor. Each of these characters bring unique perspectives and emotional depth to their respective campaigns. While they may not receive the same recognition as characters like Captain Price or Soap McTavish or Sergeant Gas or even, you know, Lieutenant Ghost, their importance cannot be overstated. These forgotten heroes remind us that in the grand narrative of war, every soldier matters even if sometimes it's lost in the chaos. This also tells us that Call of Duty has so many great characters that we can look at, so many great characters that we can talk about, yet we always choose to talk about the same ones over and over again. I hope that we can continue to expand the world of Call of Duty and characters and look deeper into some of these older characters and bring some of them back in some way, shape, or form, as a lot of these characters each have a lot of fans that want to see them again. Now, there's probably a lot more forgotten or underrated characters in the Call of Duty universe. And so if you enjoyed this one, we may look into bringing a part two.